So we have DNA, we know it's composed of these two strands of nucleotides, but they're going in opposite directions. And that's called anti-parallel. So to fit properly for those bases to fit properly, one strand is going in one direction, the other strand is going in the other direction. So something that's parallel, right? If we have two lines that are parallel, it means they're running along each other at the same distance from each other. But the word anti-parallel just indicates that one of those lines is going in the opposite direction, okay? Anti-parallel. And it has to be that way for the nucleotides to fit properly together with each other. Now, just as a reminder, we talked about how one of those bases that sticks in the center is going to be a, a uh, purine. And the purine base is going to bond to a pyrimidine base, right? And that helps us fit it together as well, because remember, the pyrimidines have one ring, but the purines have two rings. So if we had two purines together, it would sort of cause the DNA to sort of bulge out at that point. So whenever those base pairs are made, one is a purine and one's a pyrimidine. And very specifically, it can't just be any purine and any pyrimidine. It's always adenine and thymine, and then cytosine and guanine that are gonna pair with each other. So here's our, you know, our cartoon of DNA, our double helix, and we can see here's one strand of it, starts up here, right? We can follow it. There's the one strand of our DNA. And then there's a second strand as well. Here's the other side, the other strand of DNA that's formed like this. And we see the blue part here, this like ribbon that's made, that's illustrating that sugar phosphate backbone. That's made up of sugars and phosphates. And what's sticking into the middle here, these different colors, those illustrate our four different bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Uh, and we see that the base on one strand, right, forms a bond, a hydrogen bond with the base that's sticking off the other strand, the nucleotide on the other strand. So parallel, right, anti-parallel, one strand is going one direction, the other strand is going in the opposite direction. And I kind of think of it like roads, right? If you drive on a road, and this is an American road, so, you know, forward is going to be on the right lane, on the right side of the road, that's forward. So if, if this lane is going in this direction, we know that the lane on the other side of the road is going in the opposite direction. This is actually anti-parallel. And DNA is the same way that one strand goes in the forward direction this way, and the other strand goes in the forward direction in the opposite way. So they're sort of going by each other in opposite ways. Now, there's a way that we, we term the forward direction of DNA. And we use what's called five prime and three prime to indicate the direction of DNA. So five prime to three prime, that's the forward direction of DNA. Okay, so if this is the five prime end over here, then we know five prime to three prime that this DNA strand is going from left to right. Now, what does that mean about the other strand going in the opposite direction? Well, forward is always five prime to three prime. This is the convention. And I'm going to explain to you why we call it five prime and three prime. But if this bottom strand is going left to right, five prime to three prime, that means that the top strand of DNA, it's five prime to three prime is going in the opposite direction. Okay, so... DNA, the forward direction is always five prime to three prime. And this bottom strand here, this part of the road is going forward from left to right. So five prime to three prime. The other strand of the road of the DNA here, well, it's going forward from right to left, which is gonna be five prime on the right to three prime on the left. So this is the convention that we use to discuss the direction that the DNA strand is going. And again, why do we care about this? It seems kind of like in depth, right? Why do we need to know this? We need to know this because we're going to refer to these directions when we're talking about how DNA is copied or how messenger RNA is made. Because new DNA is always put down in the forward direction from five prime to three prime. So let's look at a strand of DNA I made here, right? So in this graphic, uh, this is 
the blue and yellow spheres here, this illustrates the sugar phosphate backbone. And then we have the different bases that sort of stick into the middle of our DNA structure. Now, this bottom strand, okay, here's the five prime end, and here's the three prime end of our strand of DNA. So let me ask you, which direction is the bottom strand of DNA going? Is it going left to right? Or is it going right to left? Okay, so how do we answer this? We look at this and we say, okay, we know the forward direction is five prime to three prime always. So in this case, five prime is on the left, three prime is on the right. So that means that it's going from left to right. Now, just when we figure that out, we automatically know the direction of the other strand because if this bottom strand is going five prime to three prime left to right, then it means the top strand is going five prime to three prime right to left. So if ever we take a, a double stranded piece of DNA and we know, okay, on this bottom strand, that's the five prime end, we know that the other strand at that point is gonna be the three prime end, right? Because they're going in opposite directions. So if this were, you know, to be a piece of DNA and we were to add another nucleotide to this after this C, new nucleotides are going to get added to the three prime direction because that's the forward direction from five prime is the beginning and then nucleotides are added towards the three prime end. So in this example, T would have been the first nucleotide, then A, then C, then G, then A, T, G, T, C, right? We're going from left to right. So five prime is the first one. And then the direction that it's going is towards the three prime end. So this is how we can say, okay, we know DNA is anti-parallel, that one strand is going in one direction and the other strand is going the opposite direction. And the way that we label those is five prime to three prime is the four direction always. Okay, so if this bottom strand is going five prime to three prime this way, then the top strand is going five prime to three prime in the other direction because they're anti-parallel. So let's take a look now at sort of, um, you know, it's much prettier than my drawing, uh, a graphic here of the different nucleotides that have been bonded together into a piece of DNA. So here, for instance, is, is one nucleotide and you can see the phosphate group, right? Which is bonded to the sugar deoxyribose. And here are the five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. And then at that first carbon, that's where the nitrogenous base gets bonded. So in this case, it's adenine. Uh, here's the next nucleotide, right? So we have uh, in the first nucleotide phosphate group, sugar, and then the next nucleotide comes phosphate group, sugar, and we go on from there, phosphate group, sugar, phosphate group, sugar. So the phosphate groups and the sugars of each nucleotide get bonded to the next phosphate group and sugar of the next nucleotide, and that forms our sugar phosphate backbone. So you can kind of think of it as, you know, five prime to three prime on that three prime end, that's that's sort of the bottom end of, of the nucleotide, and that's where the next one gets added. So if we're talking about five prime to three prime in the forward direction, you can sort of think of it um, as like puzzle pieces that are gonna be joined together. Now, what does this mean though, five prime to three prime? What did that come, where did that come from? And five prime and three prime they're talking about the carbons. They're simply numbering the carbons that are found in the sugar. So again, here we've zoomed in, here's our phosphate group, here's our deoxyribose of the nucleotide, and here's adenine in this particular case is the base. Now here in adenine, they number the, the different atoms as well, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. And to differentiate those, to tell apart the atoms you're talking about in the base versus the atoms you're talking about in the sugar, instead of just numbering the carbons in the sugar again, they, they numbered them, but then they put a, a prime after it. It kind of looks like an apostrophe, although it's a little bit different. So now we can number the carbons in the sugar, and here they are. Here's the first carbon, so we call that one prime. Second carbon, two prime. Three prime, four prime, and five prime. 
So when we say five prime to three prime, we're sort of just indicating where the next nucleotide is going to be bonded. At which carbon in the sugar does the next phosphate group get bonded? So let's take a look at this, right? Okay. So here are five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. And we know that the next nucleotide is, we can just see the, the little part of the phosphate group. The next nucleotide's phosphate group bonds to this carbon. And that's the third carbon, the three prime carbon. So remember it goes sort of in this direction from top to bottom because we have phosphate group, sugar, phosphate group, sugar, phosphate group, sugar. So the phosphate group is on the five prime end and the next nucleotide gets added to the three prime end. And so the direction we're going here is from top to bottom, five prime to three prime, right? In the direction of the five prime carbon to the three prime carbon. And then the next nucleotide gets added after that. So in our four direction, the phosphate group is attached to the five prime carbon. Then we have the sugar, right? And at the three prime, carbon of the sugar is where the next nucleotide gets added. So we're always adding new nucleotides to that three prime carbon of the sugar. So phosphate group, sugar, base. And then we bond the next phosphate group of the next nucleotide to the three prime carbon, right? Phosphate group. Now then we have the next sugar and then the next phosphate group is gonna be bonded to the three prime carbon. Okay, so we're really building from top to bottom, just like we had with the example that I drew out of the nucleotides. And that direction then, if you put it all together, building from top to bottom, here, 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 you're going in the direction from the five prime carbon at the top, going towards the three prime carbon. That's where the next nucleotide gets added. And now we've got the next sugar. And at the three prime, that's where the next one gets added. So we're building in the five prime to three prime direction. And that's why we call the four direction five prime to three prime. It's really just showing in that sugar of our nucleotide, which carbon has our phosphate group that's part of this one, and then which carbon is going to bond to the next nucleotide, okay? Five primes at the top, three primes at the bottom, and that three prime carbon is where the next nucleotide gets added. So again, you can kind of think of these as like puzzle pieces, okay? And I know this is vastly simplified, but here's our first nucleotide. The five prime end is at the top, three prime ends at the bottom. Now we're gonna add the next nucleotide, right? Five prime ends at the top of the next one, three prime at the bottom. And we'll add the next one and the next one. And we can go on from there. So if we look, we started at the five prime end at the top, and then we go from five prime downward towards the three prime. And it's always going to be that three prime end that's sort of at the, the leading edge, right? That's where the next nucleotide is gonna be added always to the three prime end. So we're going from five prime to three prime. Five prime is the first one that gets added. And then every next nucleotide gets added onto the three prime end of the nucleotide that's there before. So if we look back at this graphic and we see, okay, here's our, Here's one nucleotide, here's the next nucleotide, here's the third nucleotide, and so forth. I want you to take a look at this. Which is the five prime end of that strand? And which is the three prime end of that strand? Okay. So maybe this is what you said, that the five prime end is on this end, and it's going from top to bottom, it's going from five prime to three prime, that's the forward direction, because each new nucleotide was added to the three prime end. So here's our first nucleotide. And then at the three prime carbon, that's where the next nucleotide gets added. And then the next nucleotide. So we're going from top to bottom in this case, from five prime to three prime. Now let's take a look at the other strand. Which direction is the other strand going? Okay, well, we know the DNA is anti-parallel. So if the left strand is going from top to bottom, then we know that the right strand in our diagram is going from bottom to top. And so bottom to top, that's the four direction. And we know the four direction is five prime to three prime. So five prime then must be at the bottom. Okay, you can pause it here and take a look and see 
uh, if you understand this, or maybe even if you can explain it to somebody else, because if you can explain it to somebody that shows you which pieces you're missing in your understanding, or if you've got it all down. So again, five prime to three prime is the four direction. We use this notation just because the nucleotides here get added to the three prime end. So the five prime end is sort of the, the leading Okay, is the is the first part, and it goes from five prime to three prime, and on the three prime end, that's where the next one is added. Okay, five prime to three prime, and then the next nucleotide gets added. Here's this five prime end. Here's its three prime end, and that's where the next nucleotide gets added. So we're building from top to bottom, five prime to three prime, and since the other strand is anti-parallel, then it's going in the opposite direction. The five prime end is on the bottom three prime end is on the top. And that's why it's upside down. You know, you can see where the oxygen is found. It's sort of at the top of that pentagon of the, of the deoxyribose sugar. And so here, if we're going from top to bottom, the oxygens are at the top. But here, when we're going in the opposite direction from bottom to top, bottom to top, we can see, well, this whole strand is in the reverse order. The oxygens are actually on the bottom. And then the different bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, or guanine, they stick into the middle of our double helix structure and they base pair with each other. So adenine is always going to base pair with thymine and cytosine is always going to base pair with guanine. And again, if it's of interest to you, the nucleotides are bonded together through what we call phosphodiester bonds. And those are covalent bonds. They're very strong. But the bases are bonded together through relatively weak bonds called hydrogen bonds. And these are bonds that can be broken. So there are situations like in DNA replication where the two strands of DNA have to separate from each other for replication to happen. And so those hydrogen bonds actually get broken and the two strands separate. So this is what we mean when we talk about five prime to three prime. That's the four direction of DNA. And if you don't have to, or you don't want to remember the reason why we call it five prime and three prime, then just remember that five prime and three prime is the four direction. And that's always the four direction. That's how DNA is gonna be made. New DNA is gonna be made from five prime to three prime. Messenger RNA is also gonna be assembled from five prime to three prime, okay? So it's always in the four direction and never backwards. So here we go. Here's our DNA, our double helix. This strand, if this is the five prime end, right? Five prime to three prime. This is the other end. It's going in that direction. Now the other strand goes in the opposite direction. So here it is going forward from five prime to three prime. That's the forward direction of our DNA. Thanks for watching. And if you found this at all of use, please like it and subscribe to my page and that will help other people find this information as well.